Now let's take a quick look at the uh, application side so that we have a little bit of a background in terms of uh, how the data gets generated. So in the nutshell um, what we are uh, using typically is applications that have their own libraries. So if we look at the Java environments then um, in terms of dates uh, we have the um, uh, formatting capability in Java that gives us basically a, a, free, a lot of freedom um, to select uh, the format for the date and that format obviously might be uh, getting stored somewhere so uh, the simple, simple date format uh, with the uh, Java util date uh, enables us to for example um, generate something that looks like that where you know, for, uh, we allocate four digits for year and two for months and so on and it's all coming from the uh, simple date format uh, class uh, which we instantiate here and uh, then um, um, just develop a pattern that might have a date as, low, as well as uh, um, any arbitrary string. So um, you know the output for example might look for the pattern that we just looked at might look like this and we would like to store it somewhere. And this output obviously might not be compatible with the uh, uh, date types available in our um, database. Uh, another set of examples here, right? Um, uh, some different patterns here that give us, you know, day of the week and, and so on. Um, and then um, a few more examples with the formatting, right? And then uh, obviously we uh, use the um, Java util dates to instantiate the current timestamp, right? So at the time you create an instance, um, you create your timestamp and this timestamp in here, this object, uh, can be fed into our format uh, template, right? So format 01, 02, right? All these things uh, have their own uh, now uh, uh, capabilities to uh, convert this numerical timestamp into a uh, representation. So you see that uh, there is a lot of freedom here but there is also a danger that our database might not be able to handle whatever we created here. Uh, there is a, also an interesting question that you might ask. Um, okay, so what about the time zones? So uh, which, uh, which time is going to be used in the system? So um, it is entirely possible that um, the application server might be located on the East Coast and uh, the database system uh, might be uh, located on the West Coast or in another country for that matter. So uh, the question is uh, how do we handle the, um, the date, right? If you execute the timestamp in the application, well in that geographical location um, you are getting the local server time. Uh, if you are if you are executing the timestamp in the database, then in that uh, location uh, you might be getting a totally different time zone. Uh, so um, there is obviously ways to handle that and um, to make sure that you are consistent. Um, you can, for example, uh, specify on the application side um, what is the current time zone and uh, for example you know whether you want to be minus six hours from GMT and or, or some other value so uh, there is ways to handle that and uh, this involves basically uh, uh, utilizing another uh, existing library the uh, time zone library if we are using Java um, very um, very important issue might be also the question of switching uh, the um, changing the uh, daylight saving time which in different um, places different countries um, you know happens in a different uh, different at a different time 
and again this might be an important uh, detail uh, so again this is uh, there is a possibility that it can be handled through the application so here again we are using a Java example where we can basically uh, uh, set up the uh, starting rules and the ending rules of the uh, uh, daily saving time right so uh, uh, you basically specify on what day um, you will be uh, changing the time from the winter time to summer and, and back so you have the starting rule you know for the spring change and then you have the ending rule for the fall change right <clears throat> there is also uh, another uh, a library uh, called the uh, Gregorian calendar which gives you um, an uh, which gives you an access to um, another very powerful set of um, uh, functions that enable you to extract the current year the current month and so on as well as to make calculations uh, on the date so for example what's going to be the date um, you know 55 days from now right or what's going to be the date uh, when you add uh, 100 hours to the current time so these kind of calculations can be done you know through this library and uh, here finally we will uh, look at um, um, the way to handle um, uh, SQL statements so obviously uh, we don't uh, execute um, SQL statements through our clients or through our um, console windows we execute SQL um, as embedded syntax in some other application side uh, <coughs> code so uh, in order to do that typically and again we are using um, Java as an example um, there is typically uh, a driver necessary to make a connection so <clears throat> sometimes it's going to be uh, uh, something that is going to be uh, you know uh, kind of registered on the local system so kind of with the assumption like like here that um, for uh, for some exercises you can set up your database on the same system that you use for uh, application server uh, but sometimes it's, it's a little different but um, you need to uh, utilize the proper driver and then once you have the driver you can execute or instantiate the collect connection class and um, <clears throat> that's where you typically specify what is the database name right so uh, the name of the container that you want to access right and um, if you um, once you establish the connection um, so the con object now will be uh, kind of the gateway towards executing embedded syntax so like for example here uh, that embedded, embedded SQL syntax is going to constitute a, a the so-called statement and um, it's uh, created uh, basically it's another object created uh, through the create statement method and uh, once you have that you can uh, execute uh, your SQL uh, statements now uh, sometimes <coughs> what you will do is uh, you will do it in a way let's say our objective is to retrieve something from the database so from your statement you have an uh, from your statement object you have access to various functions that enable you to embed the SQL code so here we have a function called execute query where you will embed your SQL syntax so uh, that is exactly the same syntax that you are writing in the uh, in our clients right now so the role of the client or on the uh, console windows uh, is uh, mostly to really debug the code it's uh, it's uh, sta it's the statements like that that basically run the entire internet uh, where the code the SQL is coded coded inside some other language 
Also, it's worth to mention that sometimes the retrieval from the database is a little tricky because um, what you are getting is a, um, a data structure, a result set, and it might have more than one item, certainly more than one column. So, um, as you can see here, sometimes you're going to have to loop over whatever um, uh, has been returned, so additional knowledge of the um, metadata is necessary to, let's say, uh, retrieve the specific value in the column or another value in the column, as well as the types, because what we are saying right now is that, okay, well, I have something in the database and I want it to be uh, assigned to a string type variable. So, obviously, um, if we are mismatching those two sides, right, the right side, uh, which uh, might be a variable character, right, uh, but may not be, and the left side. And here again, numeric type, right, probably should be matched with the numeric. And it works both ways. Uh, we will run into the same problem once we upload something to the database. And let's say our expectation is that, let's say, something coming from the application as a string probably should go into variable character type. Um, and, and so on. So it kind of works both ways. So um, here is kind of the whole big picture. I'm not going to get into the um, details um, of this um, statement, but uh, of this um, Java code. I'm just um, basically hard coding some SQL uh, string and I am uh, executing that string uh, in here in my uh, in my function that is going to return an array of strings retrieved from the database. So uh, so my response is just an array and it's being returned from that function. And also uh, typically <coughs> Once you open the connection, right, um, right, uh, we have uh, we have an exception handling code that opens the connection to the database. Well, once the connection is open, it's, it takes resources. That driver that we are referencing, it kind of establishes a handshake between the database and the application. So obviously, it costs uh, a little bit of processing time and memory um, to actually keep that connection open. So once you are finished with your processing, obviously um, obviously it makes sense to shut it down. So <coughs> this is um, um, the uh, very, very high level introduction to uh, the application side of our databases.